Okay, let's start up the stream, shall we? Let's make sure that audio is coming through. Sounds pretty good. All right. Okay. So, whoops, that's not the right one. Okay, very good. So, 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 before we get started with this stream, we'll wait a few minutes, uh, see if anyone jumps in, and then we will start out for real. Now, before we do get started, I just want to give you a brief heads up of what we'll be going through today. Um, we'll be using a tool called Pascal, which is at pascalapp.com pascalapp.com and i will put the link to that in the chat pascalapp.com that's the pixel art animation tool we'll be using today pascal totally free online you just sign in with your google account and you can make cool pixel art animations uh, let me chuck that in the youtube stream as well pascal app pascalapp.com and then of course game fruit which we will be using to turn our animations into game characters and then we can run around with them that's the game creation tool we'll be using okay um so the way that this will work um is we'll go to pascal we'll log in We'll start creating some sprites. Uh, we can draw using their tools. Um, we can erase, we can draw pixels, we can change the color of pixels. We can add um, more frames to animate. So you can see in this example, there's a little Mega Man sprite and you can see him running. Um, and that's based on individual images that uh, look a little bit different to create the illusion of animation. So that's what we'll be doing today. Um, and we'll make a little running character. Uh, yours doesn't necessarily have to be a running character. It could be whatever you want. But that's the guide that we'll be going through. Um, so we'll just see if anyone else is jumping in the stream. And then we will get started. Okay. All right, I'll do my little introduction and then we will begin. And if you have any questions along the way, just feel to ch feel free to chuck them in the chat and we will discuss them okay well let's get started welcome to game fruits code talk a live digital technology stream on how to code real video games powered by real game developers i'm dave and i'm your host today we're going to talk about making a pixel art animation using pascal there's a free online tool at pascalapp.com pascalapp.com and we will then be taking our animation that we make and putting it into game fruit to create a game where we have a character running around or some other kind of animation going on depending on what you've made with your animation so 
you first want to browse to piscalapp.com. And you might as well also browse to gamefruit.com as well. We're going to be using gamefruit to make our game and piscal to make our animation. So let's crack open an animation in piscal. Now, uh, it's best to sign in using Google. So you can click sign in. And then here you can see some of the animations that I've made in the past. Let's create a new sprite. So we want to click create sprite. And in games, a sprite is uh, an image that represents an object in the game, usually a character or something like that. Okay, so let me close that other tab. We've got Pascal here. We've got the tool open and we've got this big empty canvas in front of us and we have our pencil tool our pen tool selected and if we click we can draw we can draw pixels um, now when we are drawing if we want to erase something we can use the eraser there that's also the shortcut there is e and the shortcut for the pen is p so you could press p you could draw your thing and then you could press e if you needed to do some cleanup um, so that's the basics of how to use that now we've got a single frame of animation right now so it's like a static image um, so you can draw using the pen tool and that will just uh, stay there now let's say we wanted to add some other colors in so maybe I wanted this to be a face if I go and click on that black square there I can pick other colors and then using the pen tool P I could draw the new color in you could also if you wanted to fill in an area you could use the paint bucket tool which is B and as you can see if you click it'll fill in that whole area now this is an important keyboard shortcut control Z to undo Control Z to undo. Very good. And you can see the keyboard shortcuts here. If you click this little keyboard icon down in the bottom left, there are a bunch of them quite handy. But the most important ones are probably going to be E for the eraser, um, P for the pen, and of course Control Z to undo. Now, what do we actually want to draw? Um, I'm going to change, oh, this is another thing you can do, change the pen size. So if you wanted a really fat eraser, you could change that pen size up there and quickly erase. What I would like to do today is draw a character. Um, so let's start drawing their head, shall we? I'm going to use the pen tool here, and I'll change that back to one pixel. And the face of my character is going to be this color. So let's start drawing. And you can start drawing anywhere you want. Um, so that's going to be his head. Then I want to have a couple of eyes in here as well. So let's grab a good eye color. I might go for a kind of a dark brownish color for those eyes. And then, how about some hair? What color hair could we give him? I might give him some brown hair. Now, this is totally up to you. Your character can look however you want. It's kind of cool. Um, okay, so that is the... That is the head. Now, how about the body? Well, um, what color body should I give him? I might give him a an orange t-shirt. How about that? Orange t-shirt. And got to give him some arms. 
So if I click on the color there, I can see the previous colors that I've used, which is super handy. Um, but if you can't see the color that you want, you could always pick another one by dragging around in here. Or you could use this color picker tool. Let's say I want to get that skin color there. If I click on the color picker tool and then click there, you can see the color has updated. So now I can go draw my arms. Couple of arms. Nice. Okay, some legs. Our character needs legs. Let's make those. How about some blue jeans? Got a blue there already. And I think I might want a bit of a darker blue here. Something more like that. So yeah, that's looking good. And this leg here, this is going to kind of be in the background. So I'm going to make that a darker blue. Now, uh, when you're doing anything with animation, with arms and with legs, it's always a good idea to have them look a little different so that when the arms and legs cross over when they're running or when they're moving around, they don't just turn into a blur. Like, let's say his legs are crossed and I drew them crossed over here. It's kind of hard to tell which leg is which. It just looks like a bit of a mess. But if I did this, you could then start to see that's the front leg. And that is the back leg there. So... I would recommend having slightly different colored arms and legs. Okay. Um, our character's looking pretty good, isn't it? Should we put a little mouth in there, maybe? Hmm. Maybe not. Always worth experimenting, though. Okay. We've got our still frame for our character. And what we're going to do is have this as our idle animation. So when our character's in our game, if they're just standing still, this is how they're going to look. Uh, but in our game, we want our character to also run around. So what we're going to do is make another frame using this character. And the way that we can do that is by clicking on this duplicate this frame icon down there in the frame. Now we have two frames, one, two. And Let's get these legs changed up a bit. Um, so I'm going to do the first frame of my running animation. And I want the legs to kind of be um, splayed out a little bit. And the arms might be up a little bit as well. And if you're not quite sure how a character should look when they run, there are some great guides out there if you search up animation run cycle or if you search up walk cycle you'll see great pictures like this where you can see how the arms and legs move over time you could even uh, if you've got like a little doll or an action figure or something you could pose their legs and use that as a reference or you could get someone maybe a friend or a family member to kind of to uh pretend to uh jog on the spot and you could see how the arms and legs move um, but you can see this one, um, I might start out with my running pose looking a little something like this. Like I said, there's a great um, bunch of tutorials out there if you search up animation run cycle. So I'm going to have my leg. I'll use that eraser there. Whoops. Have my leg out like that. And then this leg is going to also be splayed out like that and the arms I want the arms to come up a bit have a bit more action there now how do we see how our animation looks moving well up here is our little preview of our animation but it's tiny right now so if we click on this 1x we can change that to 6x to see what it looks like um, now it kind of looks like our character is just twitching right now um, the animation isn't completed yet, but we can see if you go between idle and run, then that's what that looks like. 
Um, now on my first run frame, I want my character to kind of be jumping up in the air a little bit. So I'm going to use my rectangle selection tool, which is super handy. You can use this to select pixels and then you can hold shift and drag them around to move them up. So now you can see the character looks a little bit more dynamic, kind of bouncing up there as they run. Okay. Now, when you're animating, if you don't want to see a frame, you can click on the number and that will turn it off. And now I've only got frame two there, which is going to be useful for me because I'm, <clears throat> I'm doing a run cycle. I don't want to see the standing animation mixed in there as well. Okay, so that's the first frame of my running. Um, now I want to go and do... Um, there's a couple of different ways we could approach this when doing a run cycle. Uh, I like to do the most dynamic poses and then fill in the in-between parts. So I've kind of got the character with their arms and legs far apart and they kind of bounced up in the air a bit. The next frame I'll do will be where the where they're coming down and their legs are crossed over and then we'll see um, what that will look like okay let's duplicate our frame here if we click duplicate this frame now we've got two and three and for three I want this to come down, so I'm going to use my rectangle selection again there, and hold shift and drag, and if you hover over these tools, you can see they give a little description. There it says, if you hold shift to move the content, so that's handy. Um, okay, so that's what that looks like animating, just bouncing up and down. Um, I want to first, let's redo the legs, so I will erase some of this. So that's this leg coming forwards now. So you can see it's back and now it's way forwards. And we need to change this leg as well. So let's erase that. And the left leg is going to be um, going back. So it was going forwards. Now it's going to be going back. Uh, let's put that there. And you see how uh, making them a different color helps a lot. Now, uh, you could, if you wanted to have a very basic animation, that could pass, that could work. Um, that's up to you, really. I'm going to make mine a little more complicated, not too much more complicated. I'm going to have maybe two more frames of animation. I don't want to spend too long on this, I just want to give you the basic idea of how this kind of thing works. Okay, so that's our second running frame. Looks pretty good. Now, our third frame is going to kind of be the same as our, our first running one there. Um, but I want everything to kind of be switched over. I want the arm to be coming forward even more. And I want the this leg to be coming straight forwards and this other leg to be going right back. So um, what I might do is duplicate that first frame there, frame two, and drag it. See how you can drag to reorder? So now I've got that one, that one, and this one again. Um, but I want to swap these legs here. So I'm going to use the eraser. And there we go. Get that darker leg in there. So that one's going back and that one's going forward. Kind of like a mirror image of what was going on there. Because the legs do the same thing, they just do them um, uh, out of, they're not perfectly synced. One will be going down while the other one's going up, that kind of thing. 
so there we go now what do I need to do with the arms well this arm is right back there so it's coming forwards and then on this frame it needs to be right forwards so I'm going to erase that and draw my arm in here good and then this arm so that was forwards kind of going back and then it should be going way back it might even be hidden behind his body how about that okay that's starting to starting to get somewhere isn't it good okay next up let's do our fourth running frame <clears throat> and this one's going to be the mirror image. I'm, I'm thinking we'll just have four frames for running, which is kind of like a bare minimum. Um, if you look at the various um, uh, run cycle tutorials, they recommend having quite a few frames so you can get smooth movement. Um, if you have a very limited amount of frames, it's going to look kind of jerky, but that might work for the kind of game that you're going for. Mine's a pixel art game, so it's going to look like that. Okay, our fourth frame, let's make it a mirror image of that second one there. So I'll duplicate frame three, drag that down to the bottom. And then, so I'm looking at the arm here, arm back, forwards forwards most and then here it's going to be that's actually probably the right position for it isn't it um this arm here i might have it slightly forwards how does that look yeah that looks pretty good now the legs <clears throat> okay so had blue leg back blue leg coming forwards blue leg forwards then it needs to be kind of going back here doesn't it so Let's draw in our leg. How does that look? Yeah, that's all right, isn't it? Okay, cool. So that'll be our run cycle. And then we've got our idle. If I turned idle off, yeah, the run looks a lot better without idle being in there. And idle will just look like that. Okay. Um, how about a jumping? So we've got sitting still, we've got running. And how about jumping? Jumping might look something like that. But the arms might look a little bit different. So let's duplicate that second frame there using that duplicate frame. Drag that down and then what do I want to do here? Do I want the legs to be even further apart? What if I made that leg go all the way out? Like that. Mm, maybe not. That's pretty good. Okay, now let's make the arms go further out a bit. So he's trying to keep his balance. How about that? Yeah. Oh, and maybe the hair could kind of be flattening down as well. Yeah. Okay, that'll work. All right, so what do we got? We've got six frames. 
The middle four are for running. The top one is for idle. And the sixth one there will be for jumping. Okay, perfect. That's probably the minimum that we need for a character to be able to move around in a platformer game. So what do we need to do now? Well, uh, let's save what we've got and then we're going to go and export it. So I'm going to click on this save icon there, that little disk. I'm going to call this my uh, pixel character and save to your gallery. All right. Now I want to export these out as images so that I can uh, so that I can put them into game fruit. So I'm going to click export there, that little image icon. And then what options do we have? I want this to be a zip. That way I can download a zip with all of the images in there. And the scale here, how big should I make this? Let's make it, uh, let's make it five times. You could try exporting out at different scales. Um, but five times, maybe I might even try six times, six times, because these pixels need to be quite chunky. Um, it's up to you, though, to experiment with when you get your images in game for it. You'll pretty quickly see if they're too small. Um, and then I'm going to download zip. Pixel character, save that. That'll be saved on my computer. And what I need to do now is in my files my downloads folder I need to go and unzip that file if I right click on it and go extract or something like that you should have an option to unzip you will be able to see all the images in there okay um, so now let's go to game fruit and we want to get our images into our game so in gamefruit.com, we want to make sure we're signed in. I am. Um, and if you're not, you can click up there and go log in and you can sign in. And then we want to start making. Okay. And we want to uh, make a new blank game. All right, now in this game, before we go and upload our character, let's get some tiles in here. If we explore in the marketplace, we can find a pack to use. Um, what pack could we use? Let's use the Nartakura pack down the bottom there. And I'll click add to your game and all the objects will be added into my sidebar here. And mostly what I'm after are tiles. So we should see tiles down there. Great. I want to use some of these. If I uh, click over in my layers panel, uh, click on that plus and go new tile map. You can see we've got a grid in here. I want to draw a few platforms in here just so my character has something to jump around on. Something like that, probably be fine. Okay, very good. Now, uh, let's get our character in there. We downloaded it, we exported it out of Pascal. Remember that was uh, export as a zip, and then download that zip. Make sure the scale is not at one. You probably want it to be three or four, maybe six. Um, now we want to upload it into our Game Fruit game. So we want to click Create Animation, this button here, Create Animation. And our Animation Editor will open up. And in here, we want to upload our sprites. So we'll click Upload Sprite. We'll go and find those uh, images. And there they are, the images that I unzipped from the zip file. So that is my standing still frame there. If I click on this little plus, I can add the character into my idle animation. So when you create an animation, you start out with an idle frame already, which is great. 
Now we want to put our running ones in. So if I click on that plus and name this animation sequence, I'm going to name it run. And then I'm going to click on the plus for that frame and that frame and that frame and that frame. And then if I click play, I can see how they look. Good, that's how they'll animate. There's my idle frame. There's my running animation. And then lastly, I also had my jump as well. So I'm going to click this plus again, make a new animation sequence, name that jump, and then Sprite 5, I'll add that in jump. So we've got idle, run, and jump. Okay. Now, uh, now what do we want to do? Now we want to save this, click save. And then we can close the animation editor. And over here, we should see our character get added in. Now, if I click to place it in with the tile map selected, it'll get turned into a tile, which I don't want. So I'm going to delete that character there. I want to put my character on another layer, not a tile map layer. So there we go. There's my character. Now, you'll see there's a lot of unused space around the edge of my character. Um, if I was um, back in Pascal, I could have resized my image a bit by changing these numbers. Um, but it's not a big deal because in Game Fruit, we can go and change something called the hitbox, um, which we'll talk about in a sec. But you'll, you'll see why this might be a problem when we start to program our character. So let's do that now. First, we'll save our game. File, save game and I'll call this my pixel character for stream and then if we right click on our character and add script we can start programming them now what do we want our character to do well we want it to be able to run left and right and jump and fall so let's get it to do those things so first we want it to run left and right we want that to happen when we press arrow keys. So if we go to events, we can grab this block here under keyboard. When backspace delete is pressed, let's drag that out and change backspace delete to right arrow. And then we want to be able to run left as well. So let's duplicate this and make this one say when left arrow is pressed. We also want to be able to jump. So let's duplicate that one again. And this one can say when up arrow is pressed so right left and up okay now if we go to physics we've got our movement blocks here under motion physics motion we want this block set velocity x zero let's drag that out and connect that into the right arrow block so when the right arrow is pressed we can set our velocity x to, let's make that 200. And then we want to duplicate that and put this block in our left arrow. When our left arrow is pressed, let's set the velocity x to negative 200, which will make us go to the left. Um, and now how about up? Well, up is going to be... Up is going to be, uh, let's duplicate set velocity x again. And up is going to be set velocity y. And to jump up, that velocity is going to be, let's try 500. Okay, so we can go right, we can go left, and we can go up with velocity y. Let's click play. And this script will be character controls. And we can save that. And now if I press the right arrow key, I go to the right, left arrow key, I go to the left, and up, I fly up. Now, um, if we close the game and go back into here, we need to be able to fall as well. So to fall, we're going to add in gravity, and that's going to happen when the game starts. So if we go to events and find when the level starts, that's when we want 
gravity to kick in. So let's go to physics and grab this block here, set gravity x zero. We'll change that to a y. Y is vertical and the gravity, let's make that 1000. Okay. And then we want our object to react to gravity. So if we go to physics, down the bottom there, we've got set reacts to gravity true. Let's connect that in there as well. Okay. Now if we play this, we should see our character fall and be able to jump and move left and right. Now a couple of things though. If we press this little bug icon there, we can see the hitbox around the character, that big pink square. And our character is actually landing where the game thinks they should. But we need to adjust our hitbox to match the size of our character because the image had a lot of empty space in it. So I'll go and do that now if I close out of the game and close out of the script. I want to right click on my character there and edit the animation. And in here, I can show the hitbox, then I can resize that hitbox. And if I look at my different animations, idle, run, jump, idle, I probably want my hitbox to be lined up with the body kind of like that. So that looks pretty good. Then I can save that and close that. Now if I play, let's see what it looks like with the updated hitbox. Much better, much better. Okay, very cool. Um, now, we did our animations, didn't we? Let's get those in there. Okay, we're gonna go and edit our script on our character. Right click, edit script. Let's get those animations going. Now we've got our controls to move our character around. For our animations, a good way of doing this is to constantly be checking what the character is doing and then playing the appropriate animation. So we'll separate out our animations from our movement. Um, and I'll do this with a block from events called constantly. Drag that constantly block out. And I want to know um, what, are the, what are the different animations I've got? Well, I've got idle standing still, I've got run, and I've got jump. Um, so I've got three different states that the character can be in. Um, so I've got three different conditions that I should be checking. And how do we check conditions? We do that with an if block. And if we've got multiple conditions we want to check, then we can do something called an if, else, if, else, if. Um, so if we go to control flow and we grab this if block, we can use that to check if a condition is true and then do something. So constantly if, what do we want this to start with? Well, let's get it to check if we are, uh, if we are jumping. So we'll get it to say if velocity y that means uh, our vertical movement, if velocity y is not zero. Okay, so we need a block from operators. We need this equals block. Let's grab that equals. We want if equals. And we want to change this equals to a not equals. It's an equals with a line through. So click on that, not equals. And we want to check our y velocity. So we go to physics and grab velocity x here, drag that into the equals or the not equals and change velocity x to velocity y. So we want to know if velocity y does not equal zero. Zero velocity y would mean we're vertically still, that means we're probably standing on something. So if we go to physics, uh, sorry not physics, we want uh, a number, so we could just duplicate one of these numbers, pop it in there and make that a zero. So if our velocity y is not zero, we must be jumping or falling. So we'll play our jumping animation. 
how do we play an animation? Well, we go to animation here, and we've got this block, play animation. And the name of our animation was jump. <clears throat> okay, very good. If velocity y is not zero, we will jump. Let's, and that's constantly happening. So let's play this and see what it looks like. Now, we've got our jumping animation playing, but we haven't played any other animations. So it's just permanently stuck jumping, which is not the best. So let's add another condition in there to play another animation. So in here, we're going to say, if velocity y does not equal zero, jump, else play uh, run. So let's click on that little cog icon there, the little settings. And we can grab an else if and drag that into there. You can click that again to close it. Else if velocity y does equal zero, so let's duplicate that equals and not equals. We'll change that to equals. <clears throat> if velocity y does equal zero, let's duplicate our play animation block and make it play run. Okay. So we're either jumping or running, depending on our vertical velocity. Let's play that now. There we go. So when we're in the air, our velocity is not zero, so we're jumping. And then when we're on the ground, our velocity, our vertical, our Y velocity is zero. So we're playing that run animation. That's good. Now, what if I'm standing still, though? I don't want to be running if I'm still. So we need to check one more condition. Let's close our game there. And inside here, when we're checking if our velocity y is 0, we should also be checking if our velocity x is 0 as well. What we can do is grab another if block from control flow. And drag that in here above our run animation and we're going to disconnect the run animation out and this if block we're going to get this to say if else if as well so it can check a condition and if it's not true it does something else we click on that little settings icon there drag out else if onto that if and we can close that again so if we're not jumping we should be running but if we're not running we should be idling so let's drag run into there and then we're going to duplicate play animation run and make this one say play animation idle now the two conditions we can be checking our velocity x if our velocity x is not zero then we should be running but if it is zero then we should be idling so let's duplicate velocity y equals zero Connect that into our else if, and this one should say velocity x. If velocity x is 0, play idle. We can duplicate it again, pop it up in there. If velocity x is not 0, we should play our running animation. So we can see the way the logic works is it's constantly checking what the velocity y is. If it's not 0, it jumps. Else if it is 0, it then goes on to check these two things. If the x velocity is not zero, it'll run. If it is zero, it'll idle. And that's how we can be checking different conditions to play different animations. If we click play, we can see our character now animates and plays the correct animation. A um, couple of things we might want to add to our game to make it a bit better. Um, it would be good if we could face left and right. Um, and it would be good if the camera followed our player around as they moved. Um, if Let's say they run off the edge of the screen. It's always good to see where the character's going. Um, and it would be nice if the character stopped moving when we release keys as well. All of those things you can go and add in if you look at another one of our tutorials. Um, we've pretty much ran out of time here for our animation tutorial, which is fine because we covered the important thing, which was using Pascal to make a pixel animation and using GameFruit to program that animation.
But if you did want to get those extra features into your game, you could click Tutorials, and then Intermediate Resources, and then Platformer Game 101. And if you start on that tutorial, there's a bunch of stuff you could learn to make a cool platformer game. So, um, we might see if there are any questions in the stream. Otherwise, we will wrap that up for today's stream. Remember that was using Pascal, pascalapp.com to make our little animation. And then using GameFruit to program that. And that's the script that we've made. Like I said, we've got a heap of great tutorials in GameFruit if you click on tutorials there and have a look. We've got all kinds of different games that you could make and learn about. But I think that will wrap up our stream for today. So we will see you in the next one.